Hi, and welcome to Silverlight 4 Out of Browser Enhancements. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a quick tour of some of Silverlight 4's new features for out of browser applications. Out of browser was first introduced in Silverlight 3, and initially, the focus was simply on running Silverlight outside the browser Chrome. With Silverlight 4, out of browser applications can take advantage of several features that distinguish them from traditional in browser apps. I'll demo web content hosting, tray notifications, and several features supported by elevated trust applications. I'm going to begin with an existing Silverlight 4 application that I've created in Visual Studio 2010. Uh, it's already got the XAML, so we don't have to worry about building that out. I'm going to first go to the properties and look for the checkbox that says enable running application out of the browser and then we'll adjust the settings. Now notice in the outer browser settings I can modify the width, the height, the I can set the window location, I can add icons, but I'm only interested in requiring elevated trust because some of the things that I'm going to do in the demonstration will require elevated trust and in fact you're, you're actually always going to want to check the uh, particular property to make sure that you have elevated trust before you try anything that would require it. Otherwise you're going to get runtime exceptions that are thrown, which are always always a bad thing. So what I'm going to do is actually change a label. It's a little misleading here because I'm calling it full trust. It's not full trust, it's elevated trust. But at any rate, that is the property, has elevated permissions, that you should be checking before you do any of the operations that do require elevation. Otherwise, again, the runtime exceptions. So you'll see that uh, it says true there for elevated permissions. Now the first uh, demo, or the first feature, is the ability for an out-of-browser application to display web content. All right, now this doesn't require elevation, but uh, notice that I can use the web browser to call navigate or navigate to string. We'll use navigate to string later actually. And right now, uh, I can just use navigate, pass in a URI, URI in this case it's uh, silverlight.net. And that's uh, kind of as simple as it, as it gets, right? So we click on that first button for web content, and you'll see that the web browser on the right-hand side of the UI uh, fills with a web page. In fact, it's silverlight.net, so we've actually got a Silverlight application. And in fact, it is Silverlight application. It's running inside of a, a um, web content inside of a Silverlight out-of-browser application. So we've got Silverlight within HTML within Silverlight. Now the next thing is uh, tray notifications. So I'll, I'll double click on the appropriate button. It'll take me to the event handler and I'll start by creating an instance of something called notification window. So this is new in Silverlight 4. Uh, I can initialize it with a particular width and height. And you'll notice that the notification window simply takes a content property and that can be any framework element. So I've already got a piece of XAML, just a Silverlight uh, user control that uh, displays a little message. Um, those notifications in this tray are sometimes referred to as toast. So we'll create an instance of that notification UI and then we'll call the notify.show method and that 5000 indicates the number of milliseconds. So we'll display it for five seconds and we click the button and in the lower right hand corner you'll see the little message for five seconds. It can be any XAML you want, any framework element. Now next I want to show off the, the automation and, and this would require full trust uh, for sure. And before I can really um, use it I need to add a reference and the reason is I want to make use of the dynamic keyword and so I'll need a reference to Microsoft.C Sharp. So I add that reference to the project and then go over to our event handler and there's the dynamic keyword and what I'm doing is I'm using uh, the automation here. So automation factory to create an object and I pass in the program ID which is outlook.application. So clearly Outlook is a native application um, and if, of course if Outlook wasn't installed then, then this wouldn't work but uh, once we we have that object assuming Outlook is installed we can call create item to give us our, ourselves a mail item and then we can set the uh, to property we can set the subject and finally we can set the HTML body. So we'll just put a little test message here and then use mail item and call the display method and what you'll see is once we execute this we should get the button which will 
prompt us to choose an Outlook profile, and once we do that, it takes us into an Outlook message, which has just what we uh, we provided in the code. So that's uh, native integration and specifically automation. Now the next thing I want to demo is the file system access that you get. Now instead of just the ability to get to isolated storage, which you could get to before in Silverlight 3, here you can actually get to specific folders. You can't get full access. You can't go to, you know, program files or just the the C drive. But you'll notice that I can get to the My Pictures folder, and I can even enumerate through them. So I'll, I'll here I'll create an instance of directory info based on the uh, the special folder path to My Pictures, and then I'll create a string builder. This is just so we have something to display, and then for each. Uh, file in the pictures directory, so we'll call enumerate files. We'll simply append, and the reason I'm appending it to a string or a string builder in this case is so that I can display the results in the web browser. Because remember, uh, besides navigate, I can also call navigate to string, pass in any HTML, and it'll display it, uh, render it using the browser. So if we click file system access, you can see that right away we get all of the uh, pictures in the My Pictures folder. Now the last thing that I want to show, and this also requires uh, elevated permissions, is cross-domain access. So a lot of websites expose functionality and in order to be able to invoke them uh, from script, say JavaScript, uh, you have to, you know, only that particular um, applications code can do it. And if you're, for instance, on your own code, if your own website and you have your own website with JavaScript, then calling out to somebody else's website where a service lives, uh, that's a, a cross-site scripting, and in many cases there are policies that prevent that from working. So sometimes you need to drop down to the actual client networking stack, which normally wouldn't be allowed, but with elevated permissions and Serverlight 4, you can get to it. So really what I'm doing here is I'm actually um, Re retrieving Twitter updates from Twitter.com, which which has a policy that does not allow cross-site scripting, but I'm still able to invoke it because I'm not doing it using the plugin. I'm not doing it using Servlight. In other words, this is really using the client networking stack. So as far as you know, the Twitter is concerned, it's just coming from a a regular web client. Okay, so this is standard web client web request, and uh, we download the string that comes from Twitter and of course we're going to use the web browser to display the results. The results won't be pretty but that's sort of besides the point. Uh, they won't be formatted because we're only doing it in, in a few lines of code. So last demo, cross-domain access and because uh, Twitter requires credentials I'll have to type those in. I could have done this programmatically too. Uh, Silverlight 4 now supports being able to embed credentials in a, in a web request. But there is the result co from, coming from Twitter.com. So these are just some of the features that out-of-browser applications now support in Silverlight 4. Thanks for watching the video. As always, if you're interested in downloading the example code, you can find it on my blog. Thanks again.